thanks for the introduction. Uh, yeah, uh, my name is Martin. Uh, I am uh, infrastructure lead, which is something like team lead for uh, infra. And for the sake of this uh, talk, I nickname myself as a traffic evangelist. Um, and uh, it's a wonderful journey, so that's why I thought that we are going to you know, share the experience, uh, share the pain, uh, the mishaps and the issues, because those are the ones you, know, you can really run from. Um, so uh, let me just do the small introduction, what we are talking about, what we dealt with. Uh, so the history of Ingress setup here in Chipmunk uh, Shipmunk migrated from DigitalOcean droplets wow, uh, in 2019 into the Kubernetes. Back then, uh, we used fully native cloud way of AWS application load balancers, which also had some kind of small issues, you know, like back then, additional latencies. Not sure if this is me or I'm going to step away. Okay. Um, and then we switched uh, to network load balancers with backend uh, made from Nginx, which then forwarded the content back to the backends full of PHP and all the other uh, applications running there. It kind of worked. We had minor issues, as I was saying, with latencies, uh, config, uh, config maps where we kept the configuration um, for the Nginx. It wasn't really convenient, but back then you really didn't have that many uh, options to try and for the purpose uh, which we were like deploying, um, it was kind of all right. ACS logs got disabled pretty fast, especially during the high load, uh, during the peaks and stuff. The cost was just too much. Uh, so in some cases we are kind of blind, but for the initial setup, it was kind of all right. Um, to be honest, Nginx, especially the community version, does not really offer any metrics. So once the ACS logs get disabled, you, as I was saying, you are pretty much blind. You can buy Nginx Plus. It's a superb product. I tested it for like a week or two. You can ask them. Uh, there's always some reserve for, for the country you are in. Um, and for the setup we have, uh, I asked them how much would it cost. They were saying something in between $2,000 to $4,000 a year. I asked my management, they said no. Uh, so uh, we had to figure something else out. Uh, we had some issues uh, during the high utilization and high connection count. Um, not sure if you can, like, the, uh, the screen is kind of uh, flipping on and off. I'm not sure if it's a problem. Not right now, you know. <laughs> Okay, um, and then we had some uh, something which I call like upstream setup uh, issue, uh, which caused additional 500 trees error uh, from the backends. It's kind of uh, nice to explain it. Uh, there is a setup called service upstream, and if you set it to true, it will instead of picking each port, IP and port, use the services uh, directly from Kubernetes. And it says in the documentation, this is from documentation, that it kind of helps with zero downtime uh, deployment. Nice, you know, that's what you want. So we switch it on. And uh, after a few months, we notice uh, this ugly thing. This is actually from GitHub issue. Uh, thanks, Narco, for the nice screenshot. Uh, so these lines, those are the backends. And you can see that if the service upstream is set to true, those are really not evenly used. If you switch it off, it starts to be used, you know, evenly the way you would, you would like to. It's kind of bad, you know, because 500 trees are usually there in case the backend is not really accessible. So Nginx tries to give you something. So uh, once you start to, I'm not going to report it. Uh, once you start to have those 500 trees during the deployment and you just switch to service upstream true, um, you then can generate much more of these, those calls just because uh, only a single backend is utilized over the others. So the horizontal pot autoscaler can't do really anything about it. It will just stick with the average statistics of overall load. And you are at the end generating much more 500 trees in your process. So switching it off kind of <laughs> saved the day. Um, so uh, that was it. And with that, we kind of felt that that's enough. Let's try something else. So we first summarize our requirements, uh, what we really want to have. Um, so we just wanted to use a similar setup. No new custom CRDs, no service meshes, something which really works. 
we did not want to try uh, anything fancy, you know, so um, let's just uh, find something which is already here and it was like uh, proven over the time. Uh, the setup has to be similar on production on and on devs. I have a slide on devs as well. Um, it has to have at least some kind of metrics. If I maybe plug it on and off, maybe it will help, I'm not sure. Works now, okay. Uh, so uh, those metrics should be pushable to Datadog because we are not really using Prometheus on its own. And it has to be stable, which is, you know, it would be nice, but sometimes you just never know. Um, a few words about our dev environments. Um, uh, there you might be, uh, you might know why we are not really using the native way, the application load balancer from AWS. Uh, the thing is that each developer, each QA, whoever needs to, can deploy their own dev environment on their own. They can just go to the mesh request and click on a play button. It will deploy everything for them and those environments will be there for a few hours. Uh, then they get suspended. Uh, they could be resurrected by redeploy. Uh, it's really complex, really hard, but you know we are making it happen. Uh, each of that environment has eight ingresses uh, overall. Uh, each of that environment has over like 32 rules. So if you multiply it during the peak hours, we have like 50 environments running. Uh, so um, <laughs> so uh, from the estimate I got, you would be paying something around 700 USD dollars uh, USD per month. Uh, so it's like way more than Nginx Plus. And that's the reason why we actually decided that you know we have to use something like Nginx traffic or whatever rather than having uh, AWS slow bonds uh, in there. So this was a plan. Uh, well, the plan actually started and uh, ended somewhere in the middle. Everything else was then solving some kind of issues and problems we had along the way. Don't really need to read it. Uh, I just put it there because it's long. Um, so uh, the idea was that we are going to uh, well, we have Cloudflare in front of everything. Then we have uh, network load balancers. Uh, for each of the control, there's a different load balancer. So we can say that Cloudflare pre's forward, let's say, 10% of the traffic to Nginx, 90 to traffic, and switch it in between in case uh, something will go horribly wrong, which, of course, did. Um, so what actually took us so long? As you know, the presentation says it was like half a year journey. Uh, it's um, um, it's kind of a lot of problems, uh, and I kind of uh, choose just four of them uh, because those are, I think, the most illustrative I can come up with. So the first one uh, was a really easy one, TLS suites issue, and I kind of decided to rebrand it to partners are really old. Uh, if you ever work in fulfillment environment, uh, your customers and clients are going to probably use some things like SAP, you know, and all of these uh, warehouse software, which is uh, not really from this century most of the time. And uh, we received this report of ICM HTTP SSL error. It's just totally nothing. Uh, but we kind of guessed that uh, since we migrated to something new, something different, we use the recommended TLS suites uh, for the front end. Uh, so that might be an issue at the end. Uh, so uh, we just had to go and downgrade it our TLS suites. So it wasn't really fixed, you know, but at least we can work with our partners to the bright future. And maybe one day it will happen. You know? and, and I just don't want to know what they are deploying into the Java applications and so on. It's running and they are like responsible for their, you know, security and stuff. So, um, Hopefully one day it will get much better. So it was fixed in one day. Wow, nice. Um, so where are the rest of the half of a year? Um, so the second issue, and I named it ePROTO error in Node.js. And for that, hopefully the display is going to work. I'll be able to show you that there is something called proxy protocol v2, and you can set it up in your network load balancer in AWS. Uh, not to really dig into the details because I do not really know them that well. For me, uh, the uh, proxy protocol v2 does the thing that it will just propagate the client information through the various proxy right into the, our backends. That's actually kind of necessary for us, so we felt, okay, um, 
It's a V2, it's modern, so better than V1. Let's just switch it on and keep it that way. Uh, just, just remember it for the future reference. So, we started to receive this error. It just says eProto and something with SSL, and that's, that's it. Uh, it's from the OJS. And that's the only thing we knew. Uh, and at the end, I think it's like only thing we knew, uh, I we know even right now. Uh, so <laughs> it wasn't really that easy to debug. Uh, it was happening uh, in the warehouses stations, which is like specific hardware, which has some, some sort of uh, custom operating system running uh, at a special hardware designated for running in a uh, harsh environment, you know, in the warehouses, in the dust and everything. So, you know, we just played the blame game, you know, so it wasn't our problem in the first place. It was a problem of, you know, SSL setup on those, uh, on those operating system, you know. Uh, it wasn't us definitely, you know. TLS, SSL, so it's old, not our problem. Old operating system for sure. Uh, that can't be us, you know, can be. Uh, we tried to replicate it. It actually helped. Uh, we managed to get the same version of packages, uh, same version of Node, and it started to fail on our own machine as well. But the failing, you know, the, the errors, they were like um, not really happening that often, like few of them every one uh, hour. So um, you can kind of neglect it. You can put there some exponential back off, you know, retry, and it will kind of work. Uh, so then we felt, okay, so let's just uh, try to replicate it with some different programming language. Maybe there is some kind of node issue. So it did not work on node, it was failing. But for Golang, it was working correctly. Those are the, like the test cases. Uh, so we are like definitely sure that's not us. It's just, you know, that's a node problem. Let's ignore it. Let's ask developers to adjust the code and let's move on. Uh, so we said, okay, that's done. It's like 80 days and fixed. Um, a few days later, once we switch to traffic again, this is really annoying. I, I hope you have wonderful experience. Food is good. Really, <laughs> and I'm also waiting for the Cilium uh, presentation as well, so we are on the same page. Um, so a few days later, Robert reported an issue. Metabase is down. It, it worked for the half of the team, you know, it worked for Rich, it worked for Tomasz. Actually, it also worked for me, so I totally ignore it. Uh, but Robert uh, had something else to say. Also, half of the company was kind of upset because we couldn't reproduce it, so we kind of ignore it for a while. But it was an issue. Uh, so it turned out that uh, this is actually the fourth or third uh, issue uh, from the caption uh, on the slide earlier. That for some reasons, uh, in some cases, traffic returns non-TLS content on TLS endpoint. So I just, you know, took my Varshak session, you know, started uh, digging in. It took me a while because I opened Varshak, uh, I think, last time at the university. Uh, so uh, it actually sent this 400 bad request. That's so so bad, you know, like what I'm doing wrong because 400 is like a client error, you know. It's not, it would be like 500. I would say, oh, okay, we can fix something on backend of 400. I did nothing wrong, you know, so wh wh what the hell? Uh, even the fact that I was able to see this content uh, on TLS endpoint, that, that's something really bad. So um, what we knew, every time we switched to traffic, um, uh, like 100% of traffic to traffic, wow, that's hard to, uh, to pronounce, issue started at 4 p.m. Prague time and 9 a.m. Eastern time. Obviously, you know, like uh, the biggest, count, uh, well, most of the customers are actually United States. So it kind of makes sense. But 4 p.m. Prague time is just bad time for anything. You know, everybody's already packing, going home. So if you have like an arrow at 4 p.m., nobody's going to you know, resolve it. Uh, so we usually, usually switched uh, back uh, everything to Nginx and just go home. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, yeah, it's, uh, it shouldn't be... Um, issue with the load, right? Because uh, at the beginning, uh, we benchmark everything with K6, which is like a benchmarking tool. So, um, you know, I have my doubts because again, it's not sure how annoying it is. I, I'm going to disconnect it and plug it in again. Not sure if I can do it. Can I plug it uh, out? In because it's like flickering all the time. 
I know you haven't saw it because you never watched what I've said. <laughs> they just don't care about you. It's it's a uh, it's a TV. It's not a projector. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. I'm just going to continue. <laughs> okay. Uh, so what was I saying? Yeah, yeah. We benchmark everything with K6, uh, <laughs> and uh, it wasn't throwing us any issues, uh, which is kind of weird. But okay, maybe it was an uh, thing with the GoLang and how they are actually handling the connections, how they are recycling them, and so on. So maybe we had to look some, uh, somewhere differently. Uh, it wasn't happening where uh, when we used only like 10% or 15% of the traffic. It only happened in, uh, during the times where we were like uh, forwarding 100% of the traffic to traffic. So uh, you know, let's just find a way how to bomb it uh, to start to talk. And it's not really that easy. Uh, if you write anything uh, which will just start to send a lot of uh, data to the backend, you actually have to force uh, your favorite programming language to uh, create a lot of connections and not to close them again. So for Golang, you just never close the body, which is something a surgeon would say. But in, in this case, it just does um, a lot of connections which then can you know, uh, be really bad for the operating system. So be prepared if you are going like to 10,000, 16,000 that um, operating system will kill the process uh, during that time. But it's actually not really that fast. So uh, if my uh, wonderful main app was running but during the time, uh, healthy backend was like going to thousands of connections without any issues. And unhealthy backend actually ended up in like 3,000, 4,000, and just said that uh, backend uh, send it non-TLS traffic on TLS endpoint. Uh, so at least the issue was replicatable. That's nice. Uh, it haven't really helped us uh, before, but this time we, we felt kind of lucky. Uh, so uh, we did not really know at the end anyway. So we tried to open a ticket to AWS, uh, bad idea. Uh, <laughs> they just did not care, you know, it's just traffic, so fix your stuff and move on. Uh, we opened a ticket to traffic partner. If you are wondering how much would it cost to have a partner for traffic, it's something in the region of Nginx Plus. So they're like saying, okay, you can like get us, you know, and we can, we can help you with that. Which in retrospect, after I show you what was the issue, would be a lot of, you know, would be a really expensive mistake. Uh, but it's like thousands of thousands of dollars for, for somebody who will probably help you, but you are never sure, you know. Um, then we said, okay, so let's just use the traffic native way. Let's just use egress route, it's, which is their CRD for ingress routing. Uh, felt kind of nice, uh, you know. It, it's like uh, good, good written manifest. You can like do quite a lot of stuff with it. Uh, did not really help at all. Uh, we tried different architectures, uh, different versions of the health chart. You know, up and down, ten versions down. You know, it, it wasn't really solving anything. Scaling traffic, which you can actually do. Uh, but traffic does not really, you know, you would have to set the threshold really low because uh, like thousands connection for it is, is really nothing. So we pre to 100 traffics. Uh, it took a lot of, you know, uh, machine power to do the benchmark afterwards. Okay, we are going to try that. Poor little grabber. Okay, uh, and then we open an issue on GitHub, which was at the end kind of fruitful. So what was the solution? If you remember it correctly, uh, I was talking about uh, disable uh, about proxy v2. Once it was disabled, it was working. It's just one little one little checkbox. Amazing. Uh, I also have uh, the day count, which it took us to to figure that one out. 180 days, you know. Nice. Thank you, management, you know, for keeping us in the company. Other than that, we are doing wonderful job, you know. It was all right. The most funny part is that once we reported it, somebody actually fixed it. Two, three weeks ago, it got fixed by Julian's, and somebody actually provided uh, a good reproducible case how to make it, how to, how to you know, see the issue again. It was written in K6, so I don't know what, what we are doing in the first place. So it's fixed now, but uh, we are just not too um, keen on updating because you know, we're just going to wait until we, we are sure that this is really stable. Uh, so 
uh, that was uh, the third issue, and the fourth issue, user suspect traffic. And uh, as you might expect, during the deb debugging, there are quite a lot of questions of could this be traffic? Is this error related to the migration you are doing? Half a year of the same questions, you know. We have to live through this. Uh, it wasn't really nice, but it's our job. Uh, needless to say, you know, people try to blame everything on traffic with 90% of accuracy, but those 10% when they were incorrect, that just hurt, you know, it's just demeaning. Uh, so, um, what can I say? The only cure is that you have overall your stable setup, you work on it, um, you make it stable right before you deploy it into the production, which in our case was not really easy. Um, this is actually like the circle uh, we are all doing. It's just the normal thing you would do in deploying almost anything. You just evaluate multiple options you can use. For us, it was like traffic, Nginx Plus, and so on. Um, once you are like really sure that you have to deploy it and it's going to work correctly, uh, you just you know, deploy um, deploy it into production into the like small portions of traffic, which we really did. And as I was saying, it wasn't really uh, having any issues in 10% or 50% of traffic. It started to fail at 100%. So again, it was really hard to replicate at the end. We then evaluated, announced the final deployment, which then got postponed multiple times for the reason I explained. And at the end, we clean up everything, you know. And if you applied it, it's just common sense. Uh, you can't make any s mistake unless you are dealing with proxy protocol v2. So uh, the reputation got obviously kind of broken. So that's why I've written like fixed in uh, lying eight uh, days. And we kind of have to work on it in the future, you know, and our trust again, but still, you know, um, I, I did this presentation somewhat similar before, so a lot of people kind of feel sad for us. That kind of helps at the end. Uh, so it was kind of good. So a review of what actually the migration brought us. It's still flickering, it sucks. Um, so uh, for me, the well, for us, the biggest week uh, of the year is the peak, uh, which is the week of the Black Friday. Um, for the Nginx, uh, last year we had some kind of issue and it caused us like 10 minutes of downtime during the peak, that's really critical. And um, for uh, traffic, the issue wasn't really you know, visible, as you can see at the request count. You, you wouldn't even notice that there was something happening during the time. So we are kind of happy that uh, we can worry about some new different issues than just low balancer and you can like move on to something else. Even the sizing, I think I wrote in the annotation that now the balancing setup costs us something like 10% of the previous price. The thing is that uh, for the devs, we actually uh, deployed Nginx as a daemon set. So it was kind of expensive just because it was running. Uh, so now on devs we have just two pods with uh, with traffic and it was that's it. Uh, on on production it's kind of similar, it's just half of the size of the Nginx we used before. Um, and even that is just overscaled a bit. Uh, we have Cloud Health, which actually has a nice recommendation dashboard, uh, you know, saying what should be the right size. And this, these are the stats from the past, I think, 60 days. So we can even go lower. We can like provision much much smaller set up on production, it will still work. How can you watch it? It's still flickering, you know. I, I'm the, the Cilium lecture like this has to be really good, you know, since you are waiting for it. Maybe it's not going to flicker, but I can promise can't promise anything. So for us th this actually worked and uh we call it a success even though it took a while. Uh and um uh well yeah it worked. So in retrospect uh you know the summary of requirements uh, we got rid of those ingress ingress routes. We are still using normal ingresses. So uh, if you are like used to ingresses from Nginx, there wasn't uh, any change. Uh, we have the same um, setup on production and so also on devs, even though you know um, it could be done rather differently. Um, but this actually works and it's all right. Uh, team actually knows the stuff, so it's working. It works well. Uh, we have the metrics and Prometheus, which are then pushed into the data doc. Also, uh, success. And it's somewhat stable now, <laughs> and hopefully in the future as well. So yeah, th uh, that was my talk. I, I hope I wasn't really that short. Uh, before the questions, uh, 
I have to say this, you know. We are hiring, so if you're interested, uh, just go and um, get this uh, Docker image. There's like a challenge. Um, you don't need to, you know, uh, apply for the job. It's just a challenge. So if you are like uh, interested in the fun, uh, you know, uh, just to try it out, uh, you are really welcome to try it out. Um, I think it's like, uh, I think I wrote somewhere that if you are not pulling your hair, uh, uh, once you are solving it, you are the material we can talk with. So it shouldn't be that hard. Yeah, so uh, yeah, that's that's all for me. So if you have any question, Mr. Ambassador, I think we'll deliver the microphone to you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. In the meantime, you can try to you know decrease your resolution, and it should help. Uh, but um, is there any question? So okay. Uh, first of all, thanks for the talk. The what Thank I'm curious you. about, um, have you had uh, any expectation prior to actually moving the traffic that you will see in terms of like a memory consumption or some benefits that you didn't see using the Nginx? You already explained us, but like, what was the thing that we will have it with the traffic and you had it? Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the question. Um, actually, like, uh, we... Um, we just wanted to know what's going on, and with like a community tra uh, community Nginx, uh, the metrics and uh, all the monitoring you have is just a pretty basic. It's there, but uh, it's not really like usable in sense that you can get like count of 500 error cones, 200, and so on. Um, you know, so we are just having things like uh, uh, transfer bytes, which is I don't know. I never use it. It's like metric for almost nothing. Uh, so that was one of the requirements, and it actually was really strong for us because developers were asking, like, okay, so we deployed something, and we are not really sure if it's good or bad, and the only thing we are seeing is from Datadoc and from the profiling, you know, and so on. So is there something uh, other than that? Uh, is low balancer actually reporting something we are not uh, seeing right now? And we had no solid answer. So for us, this was one of the biggest drivers to, to switch to something else. Um, and of course, you know, um, uh, like the team know-how was actually like one of the biggest reason because uh, all of us kind of knew how it works because traffic is not really new. It's just, it's just I think it was is, is here since like I don't know, I do remember I was using it in 2019 as well. So we felt okay, there's a mature mature option. It's nothing fancy, nothing like service mesh. So the transformation and our cover and support will be like reasonable. We are not endangering anything uh, with something we are not really sure about. That's what we thought originally. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, th those were the main reason I believe. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. We have we have a question on the Slido. Nice. It's engine ingress controller or. Ingress Nginx, maybe it's about if it's the official vanilla uh, Nginx uh, by you know Kubernetes or the by the F5, I think. Like w what we used or? Yeah, I think so. There's no other you know stuff in the question. Like so if I if I would like to choose which one would I choose or? I think like F5 is actually working proactively on Nginx Plus. And don't get me wrong, I think it's like wonderful low balancer. You can like use it. Um, it has the similar setup as normal Nginx because uh, they actually uh, sell it as a product, as a normal uh, normal uh, application, you know, web, uh, web low balancing thingy you are kind of used to from the old times. And uh, it's, it's I think it's, it's really good. Uh, especially it was really nice uh, back then where you had like, uh, PHP backends, and you would like to have some kind of uh, dashboards and so on. And they're actually like uh, working on it, and it's still uh, actively maintained. Uh, I think the biggest problem for us was the pricing, especially uh, because we are deploying the Nginx controller as a daemon set. So in um, in some some cases, there was like 50 uh, replicas of the Nginx. So that's that's why I think the the billing wasn't really. Uh, convenient for us, but if you have a good use case, uh, you know how to handle it, how to work with it. I I, I would definitely use it. You know, it's, it's still not well. It's it's not cheap, but you are still paying for something which actually works. So <laughs> it's nice. I'm not sure if I answered the question, but it was kind of weird. 
So any other question? No. Maybe no. Okay. So I have one. So uh, <laughs> when, when you uh, think about it to move through traffic, do you also consider uh, any other solution? And, yeah, of and why you choose the traffic? Yeah, uh, of course, uh, we tried uh, like multiple of those for each of those. Uh, we did the benchmarks, we deployed, actually we deployed uh, like dev environment for each. So we were like kind of sure that it will work or if we had to do uh, like a lot of changes with it. But at the end, uh, it came down to the like team know-how. We are still kind of worrying that if we would use something really fancy, current and modern, uh, we would be like endangering uh, what we already have. And for us, the overall stability, <laughs> now it sounds kind of funny, but the overall stability was the biggest factor we were kind of aiming at. Uh, so uh, that's why I thought it's okay, uh, let's just fix something which all of us knew for a really long time. We wouldn't uh, hesitate with it and uh, we can just move on. So let's, that's why traffic, like most of the team members actually knew it before. So uh, that's why we actually like prefer it. Also, it was kind of for free because it's open source. <laughs> but it's as this perks, you know, as I was saying, like uh, we, we try to contact the traffic partners and they also have their own price and it's kind of reasonable. I, I said that kind of harshly, but I, I believe that if you would pay the price, they would really help us. Uh, you know, can you imagine those guys coming in, you know, just going through the architecture and then just flipping the switch off, you know? <laughs> And then I would say to the management, I said, oh yeah, we paid those money, you know, it's, it's there, it's running. Oh, amazing, what did they do actually? I don't want to say. <laughs> yeah, so that's it. Okay, yeah, thanks, be careful. Uh, <laughs> open source doesn't mean it's for free. Yeah, yeah it's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, if there is no other questions, so we have, so thanks, Martin. Thank you.